crook on me. I'm no common thief, but it's a warranted attack defies belief. What dost thou on these bosky downs before dawn, when all honest boys sleep in their beds till morn? Sneaking around my flock in the dark, there's more to this than some boyish lark. To save thy neck, pray explain, or this crook will give thee much pain. I was awoken by the hooting of owls, and left the camp to move my bowels. <laughs> Listen, that incessant roaring in now, my master snoring like a pregnant cow. I left the camp because I'd had my fill, and came to watch the dawn atop the hill. Well, that explains the clamouring and shouting. A down from London hunting party outing. <laughs> Waiting for dawn to kill my lord's fine deer. Not so. We are warriors waiting here. Come to fight King Henry in Lewistown and defeat him before the sun comes down. We came from Fletching in a fast place. From a flat cap hill, we can see the place where King Henry and his men reside. We will attack and beat his hide. Now, good shepherd, you must this secret keep, or else you will till eternity sleep. Not so fast, young squire. <laughs> This morning I must to market to renew my hire, but rather than put you in the mire, when my daughter arrives to move my sheep, he'll send you back to camp and to sleep. We do not wish our innocent cattle to be slaughtered in your so-called royal battle. Now let this dawn meeting our secret be, and this fine dagger is forfeit to me. When Simon de Montfort has this battle won, and all the dogs of war have run, I will seek thee, shepherd, and revenge it be for your causing me this indignity. Be off or count thy life cheap, while I make haste to find my sheep. I do not wish to witness war's slaughter. Why, right on time, here comes my daughter. <laughs> Good morrow, father. Here's bread and ale, but I must report the most unlikely tale. King Henry spent the night carousing in Lewis. Rumours abound about what the to-do is. The town was full of ladies of the night, ensuring St. Pancras' feast gave soldiers the light. They say De Montford will fight the king today. You and I and the flock must get away. Who was that youth you spoke to earlier today? Though he seemed to be just a lad, it appeared he was most richly clad. He was just a hunter after deer. Now you must take the flock away from here. There will be much blood shed on this green sward, and I must get down to Lewis to seek a reward. Because if the king's men have any sense, they'll be grateful for my intelligence. I don't understand what it is you know, but I realize I must take the flock and go, far from the possible royal battle site. You must be past ditchling by first light. And I must get down to Lewis to warn the people we do not want them to come to any harm. <laughs> Ah, young squire, why so full of cares? 
I sought you at daybreak to say your prayers. We could not sleep through the morn, so went to the hill to watch the dawn. The time has come to rouse each night, and the Londoners come down to fight. We must march swiftly to meet the king, so that to the people we can justice bring. Henry must listen to the people's voice. That or imprisonment is the choice. This is the very judgment hour. We lords and barons need more power. Are you saying power to the people, my lord? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we can't take that on board. We simply want to have the king listen to his peers. Something he hasn't done for years. Landowners have had to pay for French wars and have had no say over new land laws. What we fight for on this bosky down is the right to be heard by the crown. Tell me, Lord Prior of Lewis on the Ouse, will God ensure that his king will not lose? God will defend the crown with all his might. English kings rule the land by divine right. This is announced to the whole nation in the solemn ceremony of coronation. But if you would allow me to advise, a parley with the barons would be wise. I will have no more words with them now. Very actions are enough to condemn them. God's given every man his place with the king to rule the race. The barons support the provisions of Oxford, an agreement which I have thus far ignored. <laughs> Those who seek to change the rules are heretics and condemned fools. Now, I must pray in thought as to how I might beat Simon de Montfort. <laughs> God bless the king and his knights in battle. May he slaughter the enemy like cattle and restore order to all things, reinforcing the divine right of kings. <laughs> is a good lookout when it's like, and I should be the first to have the enemy in sight. It's been a long, cold May night waiting for the rebels to appear and fight. We know that Fletching is where they camped, and from there to Black Cap Hill they trapped. But our patrol at the top have made no sign, the, the view from here is fine. Whilst we in Lewis and lookout keep, our picket on the downs must be asleep. The king and his army Revel and pray at the Priory for St Pancras Day. He's probably had a good night's sleep, whilst his loyal soldiers their keen watch keep. So when the armies appear on high, I we can look at the cavalry standing by. All night I've been on watch on this tower, waiting for the dawn in the next hour. I've not seen anything moving on the tops, though the sheep were restless by Black Cap's cops. The hills have been full of strange noises and alarms, which could be nothing, all battle trumpets and drums. Matt the Shepherd has just come down the hill and left word with guard that up beyond the hill, an army is camped, ready to attack the town. My job is to see when they start to come down. Prince Edward and his cavalry are saddling up below. When the Montford's men appear, off they go. We're here in this impregnable castle keep. The walls are strong and the ditch is deep. But here comes the dawn with the scarlet traces to the east. No more hiding on the downs for man or beast. I must beat my drum to alert the cavalry below, because I can see soldiers in the morning glow. You can see the sun reflected off their armour, and steam from horses all their clamour. Beware below, the rebels are on the quest of the downs. Now kings and princes, prepare to save your crowns. 
thank you, good sentry, you'll get your reward when we have put De Modford's men to the sword. Our cavalry will drive these London rebels from the hill and our brave and loyal soldiers will kill and kill these traitors who dare to challenge our king. Soon they will feel our sword sharp sting. So come cavaliers and saddle your mounts. The battle is nigh and every minute counts. We have done well this morning, wife. And though the miller's lot is a hard life, thanks be to God the wind has blown without fail. So we can stop a while and take some ale. Indeed, God is good. Pray the wind will last. I'll bet you loaf and we can break our fast. But look, who do I see coming down the track? My Lord Briar Shepherd, our old friend Mac. That's strange. It's early morning still. Mac should be with his flocks on the hill. I saw his daughter taking him his bread just after dawn as so I rose from bed. Let us ask him in to share our morning meal. After a jog of ale, he will to us these news reveal. Hail to thee, Mac, my old friend. Why dost thou so wear thy homeward wend when thou shouldst be guarding the sheep? Pray you, with us a moment keep, and we will give you bread and good hail, and you can regale us with a tale. Thanks, Dusty and Millie, my good friends. My story has strange beginnings and fateful ends. I've been to the castle to give them a warning. There will be a fearful battle in Lewis this morning. We need not worry. The king's army is in town. The castle and the priory are with the crown. His knights are ready to defend in battle. They'll slaughter any attackers like cattle. So you see, we are safe and, and business is booming. How dare you suggest disaster is looming? <laughs> I have seen the army camped above the town. Wisely they camped on high for last night, but now they're preparing for today's fight. Your mill is in their path, and I'd advise you to flee, which I shall do when I've warned my family. Now I must do ditching and ensure that my daughter stays right over there and avoids the slaughter. Well, thanks for the warning, but we'll not defect. We've got a vital business to protect. Farewell, Dusty. Protect your family before your flower. The attackers will be here within the hour. And though the castle and the priory are target sites, the town will be full of soldiers and knights. So if you've got nothing to defend, I'd swiftly get out of here, my friend. Now I must additionally ensure and find my sheep, which I've entrusted to my daughter to keep. Well, I must, I must to the alehouse for some morning ale. And I'll ask the alewife about the shepherd's tale. Concern, but if the rumour is true, my mill might burn. Well, I sat the court of your good ale, I'll recount to you Mac the Shepherd's tale. He saw Simon de Montfort's page on high and heard sounds of an army camp nearby. The page said the rebels will attack today, and Mac has advised us all to run away. Yeah, well, I too have heard this ugly rumour, but I took it to be intended humour. Yon pilgrim told me he'd seen an army, <laughs> but I thought he must be dreaming or bar me. But anyway, come yon pilgrim, tell us your tale, and I'll give you another pot of ale. <laughs> Early this morning, on the downs, I was woken by the most fearsome sounds. I saw knights and pages getting ready to fight. 
course, being a bit woo, I soon took my flight. I thought they'd all be passing by to go and fight the French at Rye. The shepherd heard the page to say the thing de Montfort wanted was to fight the king. The Battle of Lewis, well we thought, on the slopes. Because they'll capture the king, de Montfort hopes. Oh, well now, pay attention and listen out for clues. Here comes the minstrel to bring us more news. Yeah, well, make sure you avoid the battle, because I certainly heard those weapons rattle. Here's the blacksmith from the forge. Pray, pilgrim, greet my friend John George. God oh, bless you, George, this fine my day. Well met, Pilgrim. Thank you for your greeting. It's kind of you to offer, if you had a done on the first meeting. A blacksmith needs to quaff a gallon a day. He's forge created first to allay. Let us to Dame Susan's in repair. She serves the best ale anywhere. You can tell me what you have seen, and I will front it a meaning gleam. Now, greetings, masters, and how may I serve you? Will you have a pot of this plain Lewis ale that I brew? Well, uh, we'll have three quarts and get them what they want, and I'll sit by the fire, because soon I must journey through the mire, on my way east to Beckett's Shrine, on a pilgrimage. <laughs> Most divine. Yeah, well... You take care, Pilgrim. There'll be soldiers about. You keep well hidden when you hear their trumpets shout out. They claim to be fighting for our rights, but their aim is to give the barons and knights to hold more sway in this land. But I'm not political. You understand? Yeah, I understand. But I saw them up on the downs, sharpening their swords with fearsome frowns. And if they get down to the lower slopes, you ordinary folks have got no hopes. No, fear not. The King's army is defending the town, while Prince Edward's cavalry has led the charge up on Ofham Down. 3,000 men attack the rebel forces. Charging with lances, mounted on horses. Edward hates the common London men, 
and drove them down to Otham Glen. Many men died as they stumbled downhill, pursued by cavalry, eager to kill. <laughs> but all these horses been good work for me. An unhorsed knight plays the highest fee. Yeah, now, you talking of an unhorsed knight reminds me of De Montfort's plight. <laughs> he broke his leg when he fell from his horse. But still, he kept his army on course, sitting on the back of a farmer's cart. <laughs> Mind you, he's back on horseback for this next part. Well, I can't sit here drinking all day. I really must be on my way. Thanks, friendly Miller, for letting me buy the beer, but I reckon the battle's getting near. And I'd better go before I uh, get too merry, or I'll never make it to Canterbury. <laughs> and I will see you on your way. I have much work to do today. Let the armies do their worst. Susan will assuage the, the blacksmith's thirst. <laughs> assuage my thirst? What does he mean? <laughs> Perhaps he thinks that No, no, here's another quart. To replace last sweat. But I do provide other services, don't forget. Anyway, pay no attention to their prattle. Tell me, what did you see of the battle? I went behind the lines, for sure. A knight squire came knocking on my door, halfway through the morning, fingers to his lips as a warning. His master's horse had thrown a shoe, offered me gold for what I could do. In a shady dell we found the knight bursting to get back to the fight. With the sounds of battle in the air, I shoot his horse a quick repair. And did you see the Londoners put to flight when Prince Edward's cavalry joined the fight? Oh, I saw the Londoners, how I know them, retreating, stumbling down the hill to Otham while Edward's army in their hordes chopped them to pieces by their swords and drove the Cockney army off the hill. Of bloody sights, I've had my fill. They killed three royal supporters in their rage. City fathers to Montford and shut in a cage. Yeah. God protect us from Prince Edward's forces. Oh. They kill their own men, and they are cruel to horses! I made my way back to my forge with care. The King's army were assembling there. In town, everything was chaos and confusion. To say they were an army is an illusion. With Edward gone, his, uh, his men are approached in groups. Some like children. Now, others proper troops. Yeah. You know, I heard it from the baker's daughter. Up they went, like lambs to the slaughter. Fuck soldiers bravely facing cavalrymen. <laughs> but they repelled them with their lances and their pikes again and again. The knights went in with lances and maces, looking for ransoms as they recognised faces. <laughs> when the battle's over, well, then the business starts. Uh, foreign uh, ransoming <laughs> foreigners from foreign parts. Uh, well, you know, uh, I think I've probably filled my gorge. I'm going to return now to my forge. Uh, have a care, Susan, for soldiers first. Uh, make sure the devils pay you first. I will, I will. Help me ho! We are unhorsed! My steed is hamstrung and I'm prone to earth in the horse stand. It's an old noble to bring urgent aid. Without a mount, our battle is lost, I'm afraid. Take my fine black stallion there, my liege. I will stand and fight to delay the siege. We have fought and lost a gallant battle. Demand a truce, or we are slaughtered like cattle. We will ride to the ridge and call for a cessation before we lose the cream of the men of this nation. De Montfort has won the day. 
and gain the hour. And I must allow him and the nobles more power. I will call a meeting in the Priory in the Vale and sue for peace and hope that common sense will prevail. Pray away, my liege, before all your lords are dead, or they and their fortunes ransomed instead. De Modfoot is ready to launch another attack. Sue for peace now, or there is no going back. We will reward this deed, bold knight, when we have finished this fight. Take from me now this royal sword, a sign that thou hast earned thy just reward. Gilbert, your child has unhorsed the king, and to victory we can no longer cling. Although we rule by God's own right, tonight we must sign a truce with De Montfort this night. Here am I, wretched king of the Romans, in retreat. De Montfort's men have hurried us to defeat, and I must look to save my noble hive, using my legendary verbal skills and charm. In seeking sanctuary in this windmill here, or else my ransom will cost the king, I fear. Pray, Master Miller, may I hide in your mill? I with gold your purse will fill. Well, quick, my lord, hide among the flower sacks. So far today we have suffered no attacks. The battle has been mainly up on the hill. The king's knights have come to a standstill. We have been spared so far today. I hope that won't be altered by your stay. Here are two cold go gold coins for your trouble. And if I escape capture, I will give you double. Now, I must hide. I'll take a well-earned rest. Pray show me where I may be hidden best. Richard, King of the Romans, is hiding in this mill. Let's capture him for ransom while the battle is still. Come down and speak to us, a wary miller. The Montfort is a negotiator, not a killer. I surrender my life into your hands. Please, you, leave the mill as it stands and do not punish the miller for this act. Sorry, the, the miller over here for this act. <laughs> he was doing us all a kindness, in fact. And as he makes the flour for our bread, we need him live and working, not dead. Fear not for the miller, the killing it is done. The battle is over and De Montfort's won. Surrender your sword and look handsome. We need you to get gold for your ransom. <laughs> Farewell, kind miller. Well, thanks for hiding me. The respite saved my life and earned your fee. Your hospitality was generous and kind. I hope your mill continues to grind so that all the town may have its daily bread. It's better to be ransomed than end up dead. <laughs> The king's forces are finished and in retreat. They were not too difficult to beat. My master called them lackeys of the king. Hangers on, not used to real fighting. They, shout, they brandished arms and shouted warlike threats, but were not ready to kill without regret. More used to sporting lances in the royal list. When it came to hand-to-hand -hand battle, they had limp wrists. Now, King Henry is defeated and is in retreat at Lewis Priory where he is arranging to meet de Montfort and the barons who wish to devise a power sharing treaty called the Lewis Mines. As for me, the battle is over and I must seek aid. I'll get some help from the shepherd's maid. I hope to meet her father Mac as I came down, but soldiers are burning the outskirts of the town, firing blazing arrows, setting thatch on fire. So I must seek aid out of town up higher. My wounds are bound, but are beginning to leak. I must get some help before I am too weak. Good blacksmith, you shooed my master's horse. Pray, could you direct me on a safe course? 
<coughs> Mac is an honest man who lives up near the mill in an old crook cottage up on St Anne's Hill. But you are sore wounded in need of aid. I'll take you up there to Mac and his maid. There. Here we go. Now, here's the cottage. I'll leave you to knock. I'm sure Mac will soon be along to unlock. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that knocking at my cottage door? Don't you know we're in the middle of a war? Good shepherd, open the door and see it's this morning squire, you'll remember me. I've come to tell you I'm sorry for my threat. This morning's actions have left me with regret. You can keep the dagger you, stripped, you took from me, but help me, I'm injured is my plea. It's the handsome young squire I saw on the hill. The sight of him, he made my senses thrill. Let him in and see what he needs. Oh, look, he's wounded. See how he bleeds. Come in, young squire. Where is your swagger? Have you lost your spirit along with your dagger? My girl will wash and tend your arm if you ensure we come to no harm. Sit on the stool. Take your rest. I will see that your wounds are dressed. Now tell me, master, what is your name? To call you a squire seems a shame. Christian name I was given is Pierre. I am Norman from over there. <laughs> My family live on the Demont for the state, collecting taxes, a job I hate. Now, I must ask you for shame. Lovely lady, what is your name? My given name is Saxon, plain Joan, but I am not one to moan. Now hold still, this will give you pain, but I don't want to do it again. It is time we gave this young man a drink. You've been sitting with him long enough, I think. And now that his wounds are dressed, he can lie down and have a rest. The battle's over and your side has won. I accept your regrets for what you have done. But since you will get a share in the ransom, and my daughter thinks you proper handsome and sees you as an ideal lover, you may stay here till you recover. <laughs> it seems that the Battle of Lewis is lost and we must calculate the cost. I claim the sanctuary of St Pancras in the Priory. I know that the prior doth admire me. <laughs> you are my master and my liege, and our walls did withstand the siege. <laughs> you are a welcome guest of the community, though we insist on religious immunity. We have responded to your plea for peace, and when the ransoms are paid, we will release the noble prisoners captured in the field and pray for those that refuse to yield. Oh, enough of your time-wasting prattle. We're well aware that we lost the battle, and now we will make recompense, but only if your claims make good sense. Noble King, we are met here to create a mise, the best deal for England that we can devise. Three major things must be included, to which the provisions of Oxford alluded. One, you must consult with your noblemen and never dismiss their advice again. Two, you must ignore foreign friends and with your English nobles make amends. Third, noble prisoners from North Hants must be released to take their stance. And last, but not least, you must relent and allow your subjects a parliament. We will accede to your demands and ransoms will be paid. My French advisers will no longer be obeyed and I will allow 
the barons to have their say, but I rule under God's will and must still hold sway. We seek an England that is fair and free. And as well as the ransoms we demand of thee, we will hold Prince Edward and Henry of Almain. Unless your promises you do a nag again. We have had enough of taxes charged for wars. May I recommend to you, uh, noble lords, now that you have lain down your swords, that you leave the, uh, the details of this accord to a team of Franciscan clerics from abroad. <laughs> now, they are skilled in writing Episcopal laws and will prepare the mice clause by clause. The high street of Lewis was all ablaze with the flaming arrows of those days. Perhaps in future it will all be aflame with ideas and revolutions in liberty's name. But listen now, friends, be you wise or fool, the mise of Lewis was the first step to democratic rule. It was um, left to the church to uh, compose the mise, so the fact of its loss is no surprise. <laughs> when the king was under de Montfort's thrall, a first parliament met in Westminster Hall. At Evesham, when the king was hostage pleading for his life, de Montfort valiantly fought 12 men in the strife. But Prince Edward defeated him and his faction, mutilating de Montfort's corpse as their final action. Amen. Turner, who wrote this fine play. 